Welcome to stream! Oh my god. <laughs> Hello everybody! How are we doing today? What's the vibe? What's the energy? How are we rocking today? How How is the energy this Saturday? Hello everyone. Oh my gosh. I am alive. Like bugs? I love bugs. EP, but ready to art. Yo, you and me both. Means there's no school? Lucky. I mean, we don't, we don't teach. I don't, I haven't been in school <laughs> in years. So, I mean, I guess it's like, you know. Um. It's getting over a flu bug. It's a monstrous chill. It's doing much better now. I'm so glad. I'm glad that you have, you have gotten better. Um. Happy spring! I love spring! We had blizzards this entire week. <laughs> um, my outdoors are covered in snow. <laughs> so, the early morning Nat Geo recently? No, this isn't a Nat Geo stream. This is a robot stream. We're talking about robots today, as the name of the stream suggests. I don't know what's going on with the thumbnail. Apparently the thumbnail has gotten all funky, but if you check the name of the stream, it is the anatomy of robots. Um, so that is what we are going to be doing today, robots. Um, wash my sheets. That involves me getting out of bed, which is a lot of work, to be honest. I understand. <laughs> um, and if you uh, are sub to the channel, or if you you know pay attention to the Discord, you would see that a poll was posted uh, to see what thing I'm going to be basing this robot on, and we are going to be doing something buggy. We're gonna be basing it off of a uh, of an insect. We're gonna be working off of bugs today. Um, so, I mean, I told Quinn earlier that I was probably gonna do a centipede, but I'm kind of feeling a spider now. But we'll see what happens. Um, we'll see what happens. We'll see what if my mood changes. Um, but before we begin, um, before we begin, begin, I actually have a little announcement. I'd like to thank our sponsor 
for the stream XP Pen. Um, XP Pen, who have an awesome selection of digital art tablets for both beginner and advanced artists. So if you're looking for an affordable and reliable digital cal digital tablet, oh my gosh, go browse their store. You'll find the link in the description of this video. I've got lots of friends who use XP Pen tablets. I know Faye uses an XP Pen tablet. Feel free to browse their stuff. Good and affordable first time tablets and um, long time artist tablets for everyone. So be sure to check out link in the description. Thank you XP pen for sponsoring this video, um, uh, or the stream. <laughs> Thank you for sponsoring this stream and several videos. Um, but otherwise, if you didn't know, our growing community is filled with tons of art nerds and we art nerds have to stick together. So if you're an art nerd too, be sure to check the links to our social media in the description below and check out our website for our class offerings. We can get critique guidance and encouragement from our instructors because we're not just a YouTube channel. We are an art school too. So if you'd like to support us, we can keep making free content. Consider supporting us by becoming a YouTube member for exclusive channel perks like emotes and sub badges or supporting us on Patreon for as little as $2 per month where you can get access to tons of perks like my working files, critique sessions, class recordings, and a huge discount on our classes that have a limited amount of spots so be sure to check those out before they are gone yes yes indeed good sir and indeed 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 but before we get into the illustration portion of this stream we have submissions we have art submissions again those of you who don't know if you're not part of the discord every month we have a different topic which you can submit your own artwork to and have a chance to be featured on the stream um, before actual stream begins. We have art submissions today. This month is um, exotic, or sorry, exotic, my bad, endangered. Oh, <laughs> this month, oh my God, not exotic, um, is endangered. This is actually the final weekend that we are going to be um, showing off endangered. We will be switching to a new theme once we are back with streaming um, because next week, Easter weekend, we will not be streaming. Um, but the week after we will be, so we will be swapping back to, uh, we'll be getting a new theme on the 6th of April. Uh, but for today and tomorrow, we will have different submissions from the Discord. Um, first off, we have our very own Evie, Evie in the Discord, sketching out these really cute tigers. I really love the simplification of like the adult tiger's neck. <laughs> so cute um i love when like you can kind of group a bunch of things into a big just one big shape and it makes it feel really really hefty really nice um yeah of course the work can be a traditional um i love the i love the forms that are present within this one very well done Next one is by Roxy in the Discord. Another tiger. Lots of lots of people love drawing tigers. And you know what? It's a good choice. I love the stripes. Really fun pose. Really, really... I love how the stripes specifically kind of show off the form of the body. Like, you can kind of see where the spine goes and then, like, curving around the, the torso and the hips and whatnot. Um, it's really, really nice. Um... I love that patterning. I love, again, the simplification of the different forms of the tiger. Um, it has so much character to it, and you've done a really, really great job. Well done. And last but not least, we have Silvertail in the Discord. Whale sharks! I love whale sharks. I really want to pet a whale shark. I think that it would be fun. However, I don't like going underwater. So I don't think I would ever pet a whale shark. Um, but these are super, super cute, done with watercolor. Um, I just love how happy they are. I love how cute they are. You draw them so cute. <laughs> um, love the watercoloring technique. I love the, I love the, the like gradient that goes to each tip of their fin really helps show off the, the extremities and gives them a bit of that, uh, stylistic charm. Um, but yes, well done. Thank you so much for submitting. And thank you to all three of you for submitting in the Discord. Again, this month's theme is endangered. Endangered animals, endangered species, stuff like that. If you would like to submit your work, um, like tonight or <laughs> tomorrow morning, I guess, um, before stream at 3 p.m., then you may still have a chance to be have your work submitted for this theme specifically. Again, join the Discord to have a chance to have your stuff submitted. Or, you know, just join the Discord to just chat around. You know, good stuff. But all right. Let's get into the meat of today. Let's get into the actual illustration portion of today. Now, robots. <sighs> this is the second time I've drawing robots today. Because the first time I had class 
with my student at exclamation point classes, my student, uh, one of them in here, uh, Quinn, we, I, I was looking at the curriculum because I look at the curriculum the day of, and I was like, I'm drawing robots twice today because <laughs> the assignment was, um, drawing like a little household robot. And I was like, oh, okay, I guess I'm drawing robots twice. Um, I would not want a shark as a pet. They tend to bite off the hand that feeds them. Fair enough, you know? Um. Oh my god. Um. If you don't bite in the Discord, I mean, like most of us, yeah. <laughs> I've been told, like, I'm I'm mostly in the members chat, so it's like if you like chat in, if you're like a like a uh, like a YouTube member or a Patreon member, it's like we have there's exclusive channels in the Discord. That's where most of us, like, uh, it's where like most of the streamers hang out. If we do end up like typing in chats and whatever, um, it's where I hang out most of the time. So like, if you ever wanted to like chat with any of us, then there you go. There's your, there's your invitation to. Um. <laughs> most of the instructors there are well, yeah, memberships. I don't know, it's like, I started like, I keep on like doodling and then doing nothing else. Um. Before I become, before I actually start to design this thing, we're going to talk a bit about robots and robot design in general. Robots, when you design a robot, when you design a construct, something that is meant to function, you need to think about the anatomy of the design very, very heavily. That doesn't necessarily mean like human anatomy, because anatomy is not necessarily only tied to people, nor is it only necessarily tied to animals. It is tied to everything. Anatomy is just how something works, right? So let's say that we've got a humanoid thing going on here, right? Let's say we've got like a humanoid robot. We're not doing a humanoid robot today, but if we did, right? Let's say we've got a person going on, right? This joint right here, our shoulders and our legs, our femur specifically, is attached in something called a ball and socket joint. Now a ball and socket joint is, is if you have like a socket and then like a sphere that goes into that socket. If you cup your hand and then you make your other hand a fist, you put that fist into the hand, make it a cup and you kind of rotate it around. That is essentially what those joints are, right? So it allows for a really large range of movement. You can rotate, you can like roll them back, you can move them around, right? Arms have an extra level of movement by comparison to our legs, our pelvis, because we also have the shoulder blades along the back that glide along our rib cage. Um, cause it is our sternum to, uh, scapula that kind of like we can move up and down so we can like raise our arms up a lot easier than we can raise our legs. Um, uh, but regardless, that ball and socket joint is what allows that freedom of movement. So this kind of joint is something that you might want to include in that kind of robot design. By comparison, if we have our elbow to our arm, um, our elbow to our forearm, right? If you kind of touch your elbow and then like bend your arm, touching your elbow and then extend your elbow back out, you can kind of feel how that little piece sort of becomes flush with the arm and then pops back out as you bend your arm and extend your arm, right? This little piece is called the olecranon. Um, our um, humerus to ulna, I believe the ulna that has the olecranon on it, if I remember correctly. Um, this is called a hinge joint. And a hinge joint means if you can imagine like two dowels and then like one dowel in between them and then there's like a, like a thing holding them all together so this can swing back and forth. That is a hinge joint. And that is essentially what our legs are and what our arms are, right? So the olecranon, the elbow piece, is a little extra bit that is attached to our ulna that can uh, slots into a little section in our humerus so that the arm doesn't overextend backwards. Right? So this kind of hinge joint you might also want to include with a stopper so the arm doesn't go all the way back if you are designing a humanoid robot. Right? It is things like these that you want to sort of think about when you are designing a robot, when you are designing something that moves, right? And this is just an example of human anatomy. Maybe there's other things, like maybe it's not based off of a person, but you got to think about how it moves. You got to think about how it functions. If we have a robot that is meant to survey the room, 
right? We want this thing to probably rotate a bunch. We want this thing to be able to scan an area, right? And we want it to stay put in place. So if it, like, so let's say we're designing like a baby monitor kind of robot, right? If we want it to kind of stay in place, right? We can have a little bottom section that maybe it's, it has like a suction cup or maybe it's like a bottom of rubber. So it doesn't move that easily. And then maybe we have just this upper piece here that has the camera and then we have a swivel so it's a swivel so it can like rotate around easily on this singular axis and maybe it can rotate around 360 degrees maybe it's not hindered by that right or maybe you have it rotate 360 degrees but then you have to have it rotate back around so that the wires inside don't get tangled stuff like that right robot design should be done with this sort of anatomy of the robot in mind you need to keep on thinking about how it is going to move how it is going to work right and the more complicated you make the robot the more complicated the anatomy of it will be right so you got to keep on thinking about that I got double joints. Double joints are not caused by your bones. Very fun. It's very misleading name. Double joints are caused by your ligaments. They are caused by your muscles. I also am double jointed. So if you try to pull your fingers back, right? Most people will probably only be able to do it a little bit, right? So if you kind of try and like make your, your fingers flat and then try them pull, try and pull them back as far as you can without touching your fingers. Most people will probably be able to do that. I am, <laughs> I am able to do this right with my fingers so i can pull them back pretty pretty far and this just means that i have more elasticity in my in my muscles by comparison to other people i can also do that like that like weird like finger thing where somebody will do this with their fingers i can also do that like i can do that that weird locking thing right being double jointed does not mean that you have more bones. It doesn't mean that your bones are funky. It's your muscles, your muscles and your ligaments. Yeah, not double jointed, but I'm very flexible. Yeah. I can do the over exaggerated animations. It's true. <laughs> okay. Learn something today. There you go. Bendy robot arms that look like rubber hoses? You totally could do that, but then you need to account for how bendy it is, right? That's going to be a lot of movement. That's going to be a lot of, like, extremities and, like, very cartoony. So if you notice, like, a lot of more quote-unquote mature media don't use arms like those. It's because they're very, very cartoony. So people don't tend to, um, like, go for those. Now, this is kind of tough um, because I am probably going to reference a spider. But I also don't want to put a picture, like a reference, up on screen as much because I don't want to freak anyone out in case they have arachnophobia. So if you have arachnophobia, look away for like five seconds and then wait until I tell you to come back, right? Just look away now. All right, come back. Now you don't have to worry about it. <laughs> I just needed to grab a reference and put it on screen my on my other screen that you can't see really quickly. <laughs> I'm not drawing a specific- well, I'm referencing a huntsman, um, but I am going to be working with a- I'm going to be drawing a robot. Now, bugs are interesting. Robot- bugs are interesting because bugs specifically do not have bones. They don't have bones, they don't have those kinds of joints. Um, actually, if you want to know how spiders really work, they work like a hydraulic system. Um, they work- by fluids being pumped into their legs. <laughs> if you take the fluids out, if you've ever noticed when a, when a spider dies, its legs curl inwards, and that's because the fluids in its body dry up. So if you want them to extend again, you just need to put the fluids back in, and then they will unlatch, like that. Spider anatomy is hydraulics. It's a bit different than joints, so you need to think about that um, when working with something kind of buggy, spidery. 
Why do I just know this? There is... <laughs> Uh, there is a video um, of scientists experimenting with spiders, um, like dead spiders, and using them as like grabbing claws. And it's it's fascinating, but it's kind of like, why would you ever do this? But it's fascinating because, yeah, it's that's how I know. <laughs> it's because of that hydraulics thing that scientists were doing. That's so funny. It's really funny. I'm kind of feeling like doing something a bit weird. I'm kind of feeling like I don't want to do like a... I, like I mentioned, like one of my favorite robots ever is like the Tears of the Kingdom construct. I kind of want to do something like that. I have been drawing so many spiders this week, actually. I'm like, I have been drawing so many spiders. find spiders fascinating, but I can't look at one for the life of me. I used to, like, I, I've never, like, I mean, I don't like, like, when spiders touch me, but, like, if I am, I'm, like, I don't mind them if they're, like, far away. Silk mechanism? Probably not. It's, like, this isn't gonna be an actual spider, it's just a robot based on one. Like, I'm not actually going to be drawing a spider today. We're just going to be kind of working with something as if it was one. Which is weird. I personally just don't really... Right, when I said that, when I said what?! <laughs> I don't like spiders. I just let them crawl over me if they want, but if they bite or do something bizarre, they will regret that. Yeah, if I see a spider, like, in my room, I kind of just let it be. I'm like, yeah, sure, man. It's like, you know, you're just hanging out. I kind of say hello to it, let it vibe. Don't like him touching you. It's him them being in the same room as her. I, uh, it's like, if it gets too close to me that it disturbs me, then I'm like, okay, you need to go. I'll never kill it, but I will, like, bring it outside. Um. I moved to a different country. Yeah, I've been drawing so many spiders this week because I've kind of started planning another big comic. And I'm like, cause it's been just so long since I last did like a like a like a long form comic, and I'm like, I feel like I miss it, you know. The comic bug, yes! The comic bug bit me! Y'all wanna see page one? There's a spider on it, though. <laughs> it's a fantasy spider, but it's a spider. <laughs> spider jumped on my face once. I once woke up to a spider hanging over my face. That was an experience. Spiders is based on the Huntsman. The is not bugs. Spiders have eight legs, not six. I mean, a bug is a... A bug is a, an overarching thing. Sounds terrifying. It's- I don't think they're that scary. I'm like, I gave it teeth, and I think that that makes it less scary than, like, what an actual huntsman look- like, what an actual spider looks like, you know what I mean? Like, there's something- sometimes it's like, there's something about giving something teeth that kind of makes it less scary. You know what I mean? Like, if it's, like, sharp teeth, there's something about that that's just- it's not that scary. You wanna see? Okay. 
I have page five open right now. I realize I didn't close it. I'm still lining it. Would I get the music for my streams? I heard it in a Game Grumps video once. <laughs> Yeah, it's still we're I'm still working on it. Like the lines are done for panel one as spider, um, but like I'm still kind of working through it. You know what I mean? I just really love how panel one turned out. I love how this panel is working, how this is looking like. You know what I mean? Like these lines are crazy. I'm so I'm so excited to color this. It's gonna be so sick. I should close page five too. I'm also still working on this kind of magic. Yippee! Combat. I've never drawn combat in a comic before, so this is my first time ever, and it's it's very complicated. <laughs> I had to like figure out how to how to move a double-handed axe. So that was fun. Buff corn, buff corn. Corn is buff. He's a barbarian. He's gonna be large. Where? Page five. Corn's corn's muscular. He's a barbarian. You got twenty three strength, dude. <laughs> corn's got twenty three strength, bro. He's strong. My son is a strong boy. Large. It's a great time. Never? Never. I've never done a, a like like proper combat in a comic before. It's never happened. It, it's I've always done like either I've avoided the combat entirely or I simplified it like crazy. I've never ever done like properly fleshed out comic combat. They skinny and scrawny? No. Corn is a barbarian, 23 strength, 19 constitution. But <laughs> I am the tank of the party. Of course he's not scrawny. <laughs> Corn is corn is chonky chonky. Honestly, really surprised. Yeah, no, it's you. I, you, it's a that's an accurate reaction. No, I'm, <laughs> I'm also surprised because I had to think about it. I'm like, I don't think I've ever done this before. Pure muscle. Yeah, corn is corn is the tank of the party. He is he's strong. He is not a he's not skinny and scrawny. He was a he's a war veteran. <laughs> Corn and Chonky's making me hungry right now. Yeah. Corn introduces himself by his real name now. He, he introduces himself as Mona, but the entire party still calls him Corn. Now it's just a nickname. Uh, once I was playing as a cleric or something else with low strength, I beat the barbarian and arm wrestle. She was kind of mad. LOL. I I went to we went to a village of um Corn's adoptive dads. Um uh, like they went to we went to his town and I faced against two different people. Um I faced against two different people doing arm wrestling and like one I rolled a 19 and the other one I rolled like a like a nat 20. <laughs> I beat both of them. It was great. <laughs> it felt great. <laughs> I also went up, uh, had to beat a guy in an arm wrestle to enter this tournament, and it was like, um, oh gosh. What did I get? It was like a 20, I got like a 25 or something. <laughs> it was great. I can't just it'll see strong. I've seen stronger. That's so funny. <laughs> Character's nat armor, so I'm planning on laying a whole bunch of points into decks to have the most untouchable rogue in history. Ah, you play rogue. That makes sense. Rogues are kind of just already sort of untouchable, so like, you've got it. <laughs> I'm kind of feeling like I want this guy to be like, I have the multiple arms and stuff, but like... You know what I mean? It's like the face is this way, so it's like they're kind of like around his head. 
I'm kind of feeling something weird. I was gonna do something a little bit more normal and then uh, I started drawing. I was like, never mind. Corn sounds neat. I love my son. He's he's so fun, and that's why I'm like, I'm kind of sad that the campaign's ending soon. Um, and I was like, man, I want to keep, I want to keep drawing him <laughs> because he's so fun. So like the comic that I'm planning is like after campaign. It's like post campaign. Give it hands, yeah, man. Well, it has a face already, so I'm like, why not? You know. Spiders kind of have hands, but they're just like little, like, they're like that. And it's attached to like their, their legs. I'm looking at one right now. <laughs> just seeing drawing normal things don't go well together. It's true. Still drawing my D&D characters even though her campaign is over. Yeah, I just tend to be like the type of person where like if I don't get it, if I don't have any more quote unquote content of them anymore, I started just... They sort of just fade into the background for me. And I'm like, you know what? I'm like, I kind of want to kind of want to keep the ball rolling. So I'm like, why not? I'm like, I kind of have this comic idea and I think it would be neat. So let's go with it, you know? I forgot a Deltarino city named Neela, a lightener fox with her younger brother trapped in a dark world. She has 120 HP with 30 defense. Dimitri has 9 HP. Nice. Or 90 HP with 20 defense. I have not played Deltarune. I haven't finished it. Like, I- or I haven't- I'm not caught up. That's it. I played chapter 1 when it first came out and then never played chapter 2. I don't know if anything else is released. Favorite D&D race in class? I- Hi, Marcy! Everybody say hi to Marcy and everybody say thank you, Marcy, because she's our love, one of our lovely video editors. Everybody say hi and thank you. Um, yeah, man. I mean, this is just what my real hair has been for multiple years. And I'm like, you know what? Probably change the PNG tuber to have that. <laughs> yeah, everybody say thank you, Marcy. It's Marcy with an I. Everybody say thank you. Yes. <laughs> I, what are my favorite? See, I really, so far my favorite class to play has been Barbarian. I've played a good chunk of classes. But Barbarian has just been like, I love just being a tank. Tanks are so fun, dude. Um, I love playing Barbarian. I, it's like, and then I've drawn, I've, again, I've played so many, I've played a bunch of characters, planned a bunch of characters, no two are the same. I'm like, I think my favorites, though, to draw have been, uh, Tabaxi and Dragonborn. It's just because I get to mess with that anatomy. I'm that type of person where I'm like, I'm like, I really want Dragonborn to lean more into the dragon than the person. Same thing with Tabaxi. I'd much rather them lean into the cat rather than the human aspect of it. So it's like Tabaxi, I very, I, I very frequently draw as if they were like, like just cats standing up. And then Dragonborn, I draw very, very reptilic. Barbarian's best class. It's so comfy. Yes, dude. Barbarians. They're so fun. I just like, I'm, I've learned I'm not much of a spellcaster. I'm like, I've played a, I've played a, um, like a sorcerer. I didn't love it. I'm just like, there's just too much to think about. I'm like, I don't really want to think about it. <laughs> you know, I'm, I'm truly a barbarian. I was like, think less, hit more, you know? <laughs> What am I using? Exclamation point device, Jesse. Or you can look in the top left corner of the screen and, <laughs> and look at the and look at the program name. I 
really have an idea of what I'm drawing right now. I'll be super honest. I'm like, I kind of started just working. Robots are one of those things that I think I need a lot of focus to design. So I'm sorry, probably not going to get anything amazing from this stream. I'll be honest. <laughs> We're probably just going to get something kind of subpar. Um... I mean, I'm still doing my best, but like, it's it's kind of hard to to draw and design at the same time. Like, I can I can like draw most other things, but designing is like one of those things that tends to take up a good chunk of my attention. And like, robots are not my strong suit. I am like, it's one of the few things that I don't offer in terms of commissions. I'm like, it's one of the things I'll, I'll say no to. I'm like, can you design me a robot? No, I'm sorry. It's just, like, I genuinely don't trust myself most of the time with doing a robot. Um, just because I'm, like, it's either, like, you pay me, like, triple or, like, I'm not designing a robot for you. Just because, like, they're a bit more complicated. A lot to think about. Design-wise, I'm not the, the craziest at them, I don't think. If you could have a D&D &D class, IRL, what would you choose? Barbarian for high constitution. Uh, I, I, want, I want to not feel pain in my lower half. To being humble again is genuinely my thought process. I'm just like, I just don't think I'm that great with robots. I'm like, I think that I'm like, I'm kind of basic with them and I don't have the brain for like super intensive robots. I'm like, I can do more simple ones. I can do ones that like are deceptively complex, but I can't do actual complex robots. Like that's just not what I'm built for. I don't think. I can design you any monster you want. I can design you any, any character you want. I can't do a robot. <laughs> no, when you're taking a commission, uh, double double D, crazy name by the way, um, D D D D, um, when taking commissions, I do something that are, I do a thing called, uh, complexity fees, which a lot of commissioners do, um, <clears throat> you'll offer a base price, and if it's, if the illustration warrants more than what the base price is, then you add complexity. So, like, if you are insistent that you want me to design a robot, my, usually it's a no. But if you are insistent, then I will have to charge you a lot extra. Because I'm like, I'm sorry, but, like, this is going to be very complicated for me. So I'm like, you're going to need to pay a lot more. <laughs> but more often than not, I'll be like, just go to a different artist, dude. It's like, I'm not, I'm not your artist. You know what this robot doesn't look like? Freddy Fazbear. So you can go to F Freddy Five Bears Pizza and there was a guy called William Afternoon. <laughs> I, 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 every time I hear William Afternoon, I, I, not William Afternoon. <laughs> oh my gosh. Not William Afternoon. <laughs> Okay, the resources to care for any animal, what would you choose? An entire tank of fish. <laughs> I want- I want an aquarium! <laughs> I want an aquarium! I don't have the time or the money for an aquarium, though. <laughs> William Afternoon! Worst thing of being an artist is the, hey, can you draw me this? I don't mind that. I'm like- I find that, like, I- I pick and choose who I do art for a lot of the time. If it's free, I'm like, I'm like, if I'm already willing to do art for free for you, I'm just like, I don't care. Most of my friends already understand that I'm like, it's gotta be for pay. 
if you want something, but like a good chunk of my friends, uh, it's like, especially for clothes enough, they'll be like, hey, Jess, can you like just doodle something real quick for me? I'm like, yeah, man, what do you need? <laughs> I'm like, I'm pretty lenient with a lot of my closer friends. It has to be stupid if I'm gonna pick it up. I'm, I'm like, it's like sometimes my friends will need help, like, drawing a D&D &D character or something. And I'm like, yeah, man, sure. It's like, why not? I'm like, I'll gladly do that for you. Or, like, if they need help, like, designing NPCs or something like that, also will gladly do that. I'm pretty open about stuff like that. I just kind of like it more like this. Mustache? No, these. This is teeth. <laughs> there is no mustache here. These are these are teeth. <laughs> Sorry, I'm not really feeling a, a silly mood right now. I'm not. I'm not. I'm not feeling silly, but I'm getting a little too silly. You know what I mean? wall last night that's so good <laughs> i'd hope not i kind of envision him to be very large like a person for scale you know i kind of envision it to be kind of huge i'm feeling like he's an ancient robotic god that you see in the back of like a, a cave at one point and you ask him for wishes you know it's kind of the it's kind of the, the vibe i'm feeling right now what's his name i have no clue his name is something that we can no longer pronounce because it's a dead language lost to time. If I'm gonna make a robot, it's gonna be fantasy. <laughs> That's just Nova from Milky Way Wishes, help me. <laughs> Not Galactic Nova. Oh my gosh. Oh, is it Star Nova? I think it's both. It depends on which game you play. Not, not, not Kirby's God, dude. <laughs> I love that fight. Even to this day. That was a good boss fight. I will always still love Marks more, though. That fight was so hard. I couldn't- it was so hard for nine-year-old me. I struggled so hard with the Marks fight. Oh, it's a little lopsided here. Let's angle this a bit better. Got, it kind of got a Legend of Zelda Beast vibe if you squint. I mean, that's kind of the inspiration I'm drawing from, so you know what? Heck yeah. <laughs> I was kind of I was kind of channeling like the Tears of the Kingdom kind of ancient vibe. Oh, it's that's why this entire thing is kind of lopsided. Hang on. It's a really easy fix to this if I just like There we go. <laughs> He's ever so slightly asymmetrical. Ever so slightly. 
being... Aren't we all? It's true! We're all a little asymmetrical. Asymmetry is beautiful. Why does it look like a mask? It's kind of the vibe I'm going for. I'm feeling like... I'm feeling like he's kind of got this robot face. Right? He's overall a robot, but like you can break him apart. Very similar to Galactic Nova and there's like a squishy inside. You know? Breath of the Wild, yeah. Breath of the Wild, Tears of the Kingdom is kind of the vibe I'm going for. I feel like he's just so friendly. Yeah, I feel like he's just like a really nice guy to be around. I feel like he's just like super nice. <laughs> you know? Definitely love a good chocolate scone. You know, me too. You know what? Yeah. I'm like, the fact that this sketch is so messy is really working against me here. Because I really didn't clean up a lot of this. Really loves pets. William Afternoon, his his evil or twin brother, William Evening. Where is William Morning? <laughs> William William Morning, William Evening, William Afternoon, William Dawn, William Dusk, William Twilight. You know, I think <laughs> William Midnight. You know, yeah. William Golden Hour. Does this mean that there's a William for every occasion? I think so. No way. <laughs> no way. <laughs> Head in my hands. Ain't no way. William Blue Hour, William Eclipse, yeah. Christmas, William Blood Moon, William Solar Eclipse. So true. Just a William for every occasion, because he's a funny, silly guy.
Every second is William, sure. William Singularity. William Singularity is crazy. <laughs> When the Afton kids have the same thing? Oh, not Michael Afternoon. Oh, gosh. <laughs> not Michael Afternoon. <laughs> this sucks. This bit sucks. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry I'm not very interactive right now. I'm like... I'm struggling. <laughs> I'm like in that point where I'm like, oh gosh, this is not like a... This is not like a... Um, like an afterthought sort of <laughs> illustration. This is why I charge more if you're gonna get me to draw a robot. <laughs> this is just one of those things that I struggle with. Like, I'll do it and I enjoy it, but I'm like... It's tough for me. New FNAF timeline's gonna go crazy! All the different Williams after his body got turned into a remnant or whatever is going on in the new game. So true. <laughs> been experimenting with a sketchy line art style. I like that a lot. We love a good sketchy line art style. I have been working with this like chisel brush for a little bit. I'm really enjoying it. Um, this chisel I've been working in, I've been doing the comic with a no line waiting style, which has been really fun. I'm personally a huge fan of no line waiting. It's kind of tough to get used to, but like, I enjoy it. Because I love the kind of rough look that it gives. I think that's kind of neat. Give it a little extra. Yeah. Just feeling a little empty. <laughs> Wildfire Afton, so true. Try lowering the sketch opacity as much as you can so the line art look is clearer to you. Yeah, no, I don't, I don't, like, I'm not too worried about this. I also tend to just turn it on and off really frequently. <laughs> Once I start, I have no clue, Quinn. <laughs> just need to find something to base my robot after. You could always just do it on your imagination. Maybe the real FNAF was the illusion discs we made along the way? I apologize, I don't get that reference. <laughs> so you could base it off your imagination. Me personally, I like to... Like, robots I tend to just base off of real life. Like, if there's like a... An animal or something interests me. There's a really cool 
um, art series. It was done by this guy. I remember it was called Tribal. I can't remember who the artist is for the life of me. Hang on. Tribal Robot Art Series. Can I find it? Please. No. Oh! Darren Bartley. I found it. His name is Darren Bartley. Um, Fight Punch on Twitter. Uh, he had... You could also find him on uh, Art Station. Fight Punch. <laughs> but, uh, Tribal... There it is. The Tribal Collection. This was a really cool... He based a lot of his robots on, like, animals. And it was like... Like, this is, like, rabbits. Like... There's a, there's a really cool spider one in here somewhere. I love the hummingbird one. That one's really cool. Um, oh, this one's so funny. The horse. <laughs> Mech babies. Uh, come on. Where's the spider? It was really cool. Manta rays. Yeah, you see, they're, like, based off of, like, like animals. They're really, really cool. There's the monkeys that he did. More manta rays. Jellyfish. I so clearly remember a spider. I'm just like, I'm, I so clearly remember it. Oh, isopods. That's cute. Oh, here it is. Spider. You see? It's like a spider. The silhouette is very spidery. It's really, really cool. I love this series. It's beautiful. Again, um, Fight Punch, Darren Bartley. Really, really cool stuff. Darren Bartley, um, also like fight punch on like everything. A wall of mentions. <laughs> oh my gosh. The beautiful yeah it's really really cool stuff i i believe he he quit being a concept artist but he he made really really cool stuff Budget space looks like the body of that one weird kind of orb weaver. Oh, like the, the crab spiders? Like those? Like the crab orb weavers? Alright, that's it. Unconcept your art. Any advice for designing big robots, especially the Gundam-like variety? Yeah, I went over it at the beginning. So, um, robots specifically um, look the best when you base them off of anatomy. Like, especially if you if you're making something very humanoid, you're better off kind of um, basing it off of like human anatomy. So, think of the joints, think of the um, functions that it's gonna have, stuff like that. Um, so, like, think of Think of how a person works and let your robot be inspired by that. Let the anatomy of your robot be inspired by that. And that'll create a more cohesive, more interesting design. Right? So you're probably... To design a humanoid robot, you gotta know how humans work first. So you can really take inspiration off of those sorts of, like, movements and functions. 
Because honestly, you know, humans are just meat mechs. So like, you know, figure that stuff out and you're all good to go. We truly are just meat mechs piloted by a, a brain. <laughs> China Quest episode in the 1960s had a giant spider robot. Looked like a bowling ball with a huge eye on the front and legs coming out the top and arcing to the ground. Simple but cool. That's pretty cool, yeah. Date submit for the month challenge. Yeah, you've got one more day. So, like, tomorrow when stream happens, like, that's the last day that you can submit for this month specifically. But then the next month will happen. And we'll have a new... new subject by that point. And humans are just meat mechs. It's the most metal thing I've ever heard. It's true! I'm right! <laughs> You need a picture of corn? You want like a reference of him? There's one that I did for a class in like his canon outfit. Uh, exclamation point classes, by the way. But you guys can hear me talk about other things. <laughs> but, you know, see, corn is very muscular. He's very like, he's very built. Like if I, if I shorthanded drawing corn, He's very, like... It's like, I think the one thing, like, whenever people draw corns, they tend to draw them very skinny. I'm like, I think, I think we have a, we have a... There's a misconception going on. <laughs> like, corn, I tend to draw, like, very, like... And Korn specifically, like, the... He doesn't have, like, visible, like, abs. These are belly scales. So it's, like, his, like, stomach is, like... It's the same thing with, like, the, the chest here. It's, like, they're not... It's not pectoral muscle. They're, they're scales. It's all scales. See, so he's, like... His scales just follow the anatomy really well. But no, he's he's very, very built. Korn is, Korn is a strong boy. He's got three fingers. I think corn is deceptively easy to draw. <laughs> it's like he's he's like generally like the shapes, if you really simplify them, he's not that bad. But like he's got a lot of muscle, so it's kind of like that like you gotta know how to draw muscle pretty well. Is how I would draw corn. The fact that he's both buff and has this cute, scratchy voice is great. I'm gonna miss not being able to do this voice anymore. Like, being able to talk as Korn is really funny. So, like, if the day that I don't get to talk and play as Korn anymore is gonna be so sad. Because <laughs> then I love, I love doing his voice. It's gonna be so, like, upsetting. <laughs> Once I don't get to play him anymore. My friends are like, you should just play him in, like, one shots. And I'm like, yeah, I guess I could. Corn is trans. He is. Corn is trans. That reveal was so fun. K Ash Ketchum. Yeah, a lot of people. It's like when I first did the voice, it was like Ash Ketchum, Young Trunks. Um, <laughs> yeah, Young Trunks. I could I could do Trunk Young Trunks' voice pretty well. Corn's retiring. Well, not yet. <laughs> I mean, Camp 8 isn't over yet, but, like, once it is over, I'm gonna be so sad. Never even you have that voice? Yeah, man. 
And then I'm gonna have to learn how to do a British accent for my other character that I'm gonna be playing soon. Etalan, my my warforged bard. She's gonna be so fun to play. Dork hair to scratchy voices. Yeah, man. Trans mask. Yippee! You love to see it. I can also do a really good togepi. <laughs> I've been told I could do a really good togepi. <laughs> British, yeah. I'm gonna have to learn how to do that accent well. I can't do it consistently. I'm a good parrot. Like if I hear it, I can copy it really well, but I'm really not good at doing it off the top of my head, I've learned. British, yeah. Togepi. I've been told I can do a good Togepi. I want to do a good Bayleaf, but I don't think I can match how, like, cute she is in the anime. So sad. I can do a good Pikachu. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> Togepi! <laughs> Mr. Half said, you don't need to get, like, aggro. I wasn't gonna... <laughs> the character I'm doing is gonna be a very serious character. <laughs> I promise. <laughs> Visual behavioral. <laughs> oh, so good. Thank you. <laughs> I've been told I can do a good <laughs> We were watching... I was watching it with my partner, and he was like... Wait, you did that so good! I was like, oh, did I? <laughs> I love Togepi. I love her. <laughs> so good, Togepi. I think I find issue with optics. I understand, yeah. I mean, I'm not gonna, like, I really wanna... It's gonna be, like, a very fantasy kind of British accent, so, like, calling it, like, British, I guess, is kind of, like, wishy-washy. It's the same British accent, I guess, that's in, like, Lord of the Rings. I'm just trying British accents. They're placed farther back in the throat. Fair enough. Hello. Yannis Leponge. <laughs> Yeah, I'll just I'll just have to practice is all. I'm like I gotta find tutorials and whatever. <laughs> what am I doing? I'm drawing spider robot thing. It started off as like you know uh one thing, and then I kind of just started lining, and I'm sort of just letting my hand guide me. <laughs> Now he's kind of like this spider robot god thing that you would find in the back of a cave by accident. You know? It will grant you three wishes for a price. A bag of Cheetos and half of your soul. The half that you haven't used yet, that hasn't been manifested because you haven't lived that long. The secret boss is just chilling. Yeah, you accidentally find it in the back of a cave, and you're like, wait, wait, wait. It's like when you came across Cynthia in Pokemon Black and White. <laughs> and you enter the house and you're like, hang on! <laughs> Can we give someone else's half soul? You'd have to bargain. Cause no consent is not cool.
We give the bodies of a billion bugs instead of a soul. No, I don't think so, because this one wants human souls. Watching you line has made me want to do line art again. I love lining. Lining is like my favorite part of the process. It's like, I'm sure... <laughs> I'm sure with with this you can tell that lining is my favorite part of the process. It's like I'm gonna make the coloring so like simplified. I'm like, it's gonna be great. It's gonna be awesome. Yeah, never never lined a fight scene before, or never drawn a fight scene before. It's great. Yeah, I'm sure you can tell that lining is my favorite part of the process. <laughs> you know, it's gonna be great. <laughs> Spider God Terms of Service. So true. He pulls out like his card on like a phone. <laughs> Please read those terms of service first. <laughs> Love that tiger? What tiger? I didn't draw a tiger. He's <laughs> gonna ask for a tip. He's gonna ask for five stars on Uber. Gordon go cute to terrifying. Execute very quickly. Yes! Listen, Dragonborn are just, like, you know? That's kind of the vibe that I want. I wanted corn to be very deceptively cute. It's very similar to, like, very deceptively deceptively easy to draw. You know? Corn slowly became less animator friendly the more that I drew him. Because I'm not an animator, I'm an illustrator. So I'm like, I, I'm like, give him more details. <laughs> Make him more complicated to draw, you know? Yeah, so funny. I love him. He's so fun to draw. Tiger has looked like it. Oh! Oh, this one? I didn't draw this. That's Evie's. It's the, the featured art. Um, it's the featured art for, for this week. Yeah, man. Sorry, this is just because I'm be looking, looking at my own comic pages. I'm so excited to color these, dude. Ugh. It's gonna be great. Fantasy spiders. <laughs> How would you rate your- <laughs> Oh my gosh. How would you rate your mortal to god experience? Whispers, choose 10 out of 10. It's beautiful though, yeah. Give him his souls, he's hungry. Yeah, if you if you're hungry, he's hungry. Let him have your soul. <laughs> Takes one look at your soul. He's for me. <laughs> Pretty please, can I have your soul? <laughs> I'm vibing with this robot. Thank you. I also vibe with him, you know. If you're cold, he's cold. Let him in. I just love ancient technology. I love fantasy... Fantasy robots. I just think that they're so neat. Like, Tears of the Kingdom, when they introduced those, like... Those, like, clay constructs. Like, every time they'd move, they'd make, like, that clinking sound. Like, of, like, old, like, terracotta pottery hitting against each other i just i lost my mind i was so into it i was like oh my gosh these guys are awesome <laughs> just playing tears of the kingdom blind was the best it was just like going into it with knowing absolutely nothing felt so good <laughs> mask face thank you What sorry spider god has that one customer service tablet yeah he's got like it's like when you go to like a store and it's like you you have to pay with square so they pull like a like an ipad for you to like tap your card onto and before it it's like leave a tip and the tip says like it's like good great excellent
you know? And they're like, and you're like, oh, man, <laughs> now I feel guilty. <laughs> you know? So you, pat, you tap, like, excellent. <laughs> it's like a 30% tip. I try to tip, like, 20, 20% all the time, but, like, still, I'm like, I'm like, oh, man, I gotta tip you. <laughs> I feel bad. I'm like, I feel like I should tip you. Tipping is apparently a very American thing. Like I've been I've I've been told that tipping culture in America is very, very intense. <laughs> gone back into Voltron against my wishes and the giant robots were always so cool. Not the actual Voltron though, that thing. Kinda ugly. Uh oh, like the original Voltron. Or, or unless you mean like the lions. I was really into Voltron while it was coming out. Um everything past um, hang on. What season was that? I don't want to give away a huge spoiler. Uh, when did we learn this? What episode was this revealed? Hang on. I think it's season... Season six. We just, everything after season six, we don't think about. Just like, just pretend it doesn't exist. It's just like, everything past season six, we don't think about. Favorite kind of robots of the modern military kind. I really enjoy the near future aesthetic. That's fair. I am, I am like, I either love like the really sleek, cybernetic, like very, very cyberpunk look, or I love that ancient robotic vibe. Like I'm like, I'm one or the, I'm like, I'm one or the other. I have no in between. <laughs> Fell off after like season five or something. I haven't watched it in a while. Dude, just everything after season six, just, just, it doesn't exist. It didn't happen. My, my best friend also stopped watching after season five, and they were like, oh, I'm glad the ending didn't happen. <laughs> just don't. Yeah, just just pretend it didn't happen, and you're, you're good. Just, like, after you watch, if you're gonna watch it, watch up until, like, season six, and then just, like, yep, we're good. Don't need to watch anything else. You know? Because the end was just super underwhelming, and, like, it all just kind of, like, the writing just kind of went a little haywire and you're like what is going on it's like you just pretend it didn't happen it's all good i mean the whole thing twice unfortunately i only rewatched seasons one and two a couple times and then like everything after that i only watched once Ancient type of robots have a sense of, like, wonder. I don't know, but I love them so much. Yeah, it's very, very... Because it feels like robots are so, like... They feel so current gen, if that makes sense. Like, it feels so, like, modern. So to see them in, like, a very non-modern setting is, like, it's wondrous. It's very, very magical. It's so, like... It's so, like, whoa. It's like, it's like you existed all this time back. It's like seeing, like... It's like seeing something light up in ancient ruins, you know? You're like, oh, hang on. <laughs> it's like if you saw, like, a cyan blue light in, like, a Mayan temple, you know? You're like, why is this here? <laughs> you know? Yeah, the Divine Beasts, amazing design. Breath of the Wild, like, ancient technology in, like, Breath of the Wild, Tears of the Kingdom, amazing. The t I feel like I love Breath of the Wild. I t Like... As a whole, Tears of the Kingdom's ancient technology sold me. I love that, like, the the green, it, like, it felt so ancient. Like, it really, like, the fact that they're, like, ancient constructs and they kind of, like, clink together. Like, I mentioned it already. Like, I love the sound they make when they move. Like, that ceramic feeling. But, like, they're ancient, so it's like they could have also easily been made of copper. And then they, like, oxidized over time, and that's why they're green. Like, so cool. So, so cool. <laughs> Hi, Kevin. Thank you. Your robot, it's broken! <laughs> Typically a bad thing, though. Yeah, I get 
that, but like, it's also cool. <laughs> I don't know why I've been doing this recently, but my brain keeps defaulting to the female pronoun, thinking it's gender neutral, so I guess everyone's a waitress now. Yeah, <laughs> That's me with, like, with, like, the male pronoun. I'm like, I, I'm like, everything, he's like, I'm like, he's so cute, he's just a little guy. I say that all the time. And, like, I try to default to they, them a lot of the times, but, like, sometimes, especially if I'm talking just to, like, about, like, a dog or a cat, I'm like, he's so cute, he's just a little guy, or, like, a bug. If I look at a tree hopper, I'm like, that's, that's a little guy right there. That that right there, that's a little dude. <laughs> green. Yeah, green. <laughs> I feel like the oldest thing in the world, the most advanced things in Breath of the Wild. Yeah. It's super cool. That, that like, that, like, con like, that conflicting, that conflicting aesthetic is so, so cool. I have the Breath of the Wild art book i'm fiending after the tears of the kingdom one i'm gonna be going to a convention in may and i'm like i hope they have one because i got a different art book from that same convention years ago so i'm kind of hoping i'm like hopefully they'll have it you know <laughs> Can just download this added to my desktop wallpapers it's kind of scuffed but like i'm glad you enjoy it Oh, let's not do that. Let's... I want to, like, mimic. Oh, you know what, actually? Let's do... No. Mm -hmm. Oh, I know what we do. There we go. Did I switch up my line art style? A little, yeah. I am working with a uh, chisel brush instead of uh, one of my standard ones. If I was working with no lines, I'd be working with a rough inker, which has like, oh, I'd be working with this. Rough inker, no, no line weight. I use this one for my comics. Um, and then I have this one, which I used to use on streams. So this one was just very, very... This one's just a rectangle that I has pen pressure on it but yeah no i'm working with a chisel today very cool thank you she-ra however and truly advanced was millions of years ago yeah my dad was really into she-ra he kept on getting he kept on asking me to watch it um but then i, I like just never did but i've been told really good <laughs> it's one of my dad's favorite shows she-ra like the original and the the newest one went so hard yeah favorite thing in the world is when men break gender norms but act super masculine about it. like i'm pretty princess rat yes so true oh my god i love it long time ago one of the early earlier um D, D sessions that i had with corn um they went to a ball i put them in a dress it was cute <laughs> I kind of wanted him to fight with his axe in the dress, but I'm like, it's too bad. So he's cool brush, yeah. Adorable, yeah. Especially fond of robots that incorporate non-metals in their design. For ancient tech, it's mostly ceramics. In your future, it's tough fabrics. My favorite for future rob robots is biotech. I love biotech. I am such a huge fan of biotechnology. It's so sick, dude. Biotech is like solar punk. Okay, hot take. Solar punk better than cyberpunk easily. I just like I think it's an underused concept. I think solar punk, the idea of like a futuristic utopia where everything's sick and everybody uses green energy. Punk is heck, right? I think it's awesome, you know, where we use like, 
like kinetic based energy and solar power and wind energy you know it's like the the eco the eco friendlier energies you know and like everything's like green and nice and the environment's okay and everyone's okay you know i think that that's awesome i've only ever seen cyberpunk trust me look up look up solar punk scorn is not solar punk <laughs> I think Scorn, if I'm thinking of the right name, if I'm thinking of the right game. No, Scorn is not, no. Scorn is not Solar Punk. Um, I probably will, how to, here, I probably will color this if, if something, if it's like really light. Dystopia tropes are easier to use usually this isn't as much sadly it's so upsetting i'm just like i think that you can do something really neat with solar punk i worked with solar punk a lot when i was younger it was just it was just a lot of fun i'm like i think like there is something there are other different there are other like ways to add conflict in a solar punk society Like, it's like, like you're like, because dystopia is like, like cyberpunk, it tends to be very political, um, very political or sociopolitical or stuff like that. Right. And I'm like, that's totally fine. I'm like, I tend to enjoy those kinds of plots a lot, but I'm like, I think that there are other kinds of conflict that you can really mess with in a city that's already a utopia, you know? Even with a utopia, you can still make it, like, socio-political, you know? It's like, why is it a utopia? Is the utopia actually a utopia? Are we... Is it real free will, or are we being controlled? That kind of thing, you know? You have any tips for drawing backgrounds? I have no idea where to start when I draw one. Let me show you a secret. Thumbnail out your general composition. Think about what angle you want the viewer to look at. Alright, let's say we want to look down onto something. Draw our horizon line in. Now you have a flat plane to work with. Bush. Bush. Tree. Tree. More bushes. Tree. I'm gonna put a bench in here. Road over here. Houses. Person. Ta-da! <laughs> you know, as long as you put that grid down, suddenly everything else will kind of fall into place. Just because then you have that perspective in line. And then you sort of just put objects in there that match that perspective and you're just kind of good, you know? It does require you to have a pretty good sense of perspective, but like, you know, all things considered, not the worst. We do have a background video of you. Yes. Dystopian and Utopian Islands for One Nation. Yeah. <laughs> Speedrun background tutorial. Any percent. So true.
Forgive me. Goodness. Uh, everything is fine. Yeah, that's a good one. Bye, Van. Okay, hang on just a second. I will be right back. Okay, hi, so sorry. <laughs> Can we hear me okay? Can you hear? All right. Would your robot guy be able to pass a captcha? I think so, because he's like an ancient god. I think, well actually, you know, he's old, so maybe he doesn't understand how a CAPTCHA works. Alright, perfect. He <laughs> fat finger the CAPTCHA! Which is really funny because he's got long, long spindly little fingers. Also got a language barrier. You're right. <laughs> I 
<laughs> How does this do hickey tick? <laughs> And she's larger than a human, so maybe. Yeah, to be fair, he is, he's like, like, I did like a person for scale, and it's like, you know. <laughs> human for scale, pretty tiny, I think. I should probably do that, like, yeah, human for scale. How do I make those lines so elegantly? Uh, years of practice and a love of line art. Yeah, there we go. Give us a nice scale. That's a dot. Pretty close, yeah. I mean, it's not like larger than life, but it's, it's pretty big. <laughs> like the size of a skyscraper, maybe. <laughs> Exclusively refer to him as a grandpa spider now. That'd be pretty cool. You know, I have been meaning to draw like a spider queen, so like maybe I'll maybe I'll like kinda take this or <laughs> reuse this at some point. I needed to draw a queen for the comic, so you chilling on the wall? Yep. Just chilling on the wall. Just hanging around. Grandma spider, perhaps? No, I think I, I kind of now I can only see this as like an ancient like male god, so I'm like, I might not make this the the thing. I mean most people I mean most people like do spider queens. I'm like, it could be kinda cool if it was a spider king. <laughs> Cause I'm like, that's also different. Though to be fair, the the insect kingdom is very ma matriarchal, very very female run, in the in the insect kingdom. <laughs> I do not understand what you're talking about, Kevin. But like you know, I'm glad if it if it if it made you smile. <laughs> Use even bigger spider queen. You know? Got a good point there. Actually, Quinn, you're a genius. You've, you've, you've. Alright. Now I know. Now I understand. Now, now it. Yes, it will be a spider king. <laughs> I'm like, I was like, a spider queen. It's like, that means it's an even bigger queen. I'm like, there already is an even bigger queen. So this is like one of her subordinates. Ah, <laughs> you're right. True. So true. I'm cooking. I'm cooking. It's because they're in. Okay. So technically, for the comic that I'm doing, right, I can't explicitly say where corn is because, uh, like the the setting that we did for our campaign is copyrighted. So I'm like, I can't do that. Um, can't explicitly say that, but we do have a lot of, like, homebrewed, like, um, characters and, like, gods and beings that we came up with, right? One of them is Zaga, who is part of my partner's character's, uh, backstory. And she is the empress of insects and bone, the queen of spiders, right? And she is an archfey who is huge and beautiful, um... Or she's normal. She, oh, she's quite tall. She's like six feet tall. Um, but 
Um, her... Thank you, Joe, for the $10 dono. Appreciate it, as always. Um... She's, like, six feet tall, but, like, if... Um... Like, but she could also, like, transform into, like, a giant, like, spider, like, kaiju, essentially. She's got eight arms. She just walks on all of her... All of her arms. Um... So she becomes she becomes larger than life. She becomes huge. Um, so it's like I could essentially make this like the Spider King, and then like she's the overarching queen. Ah, if you want the brush that I'm using, it's a Photoshop brush pack, Luna's Chisel Party. It's this. Luna's Chisel Party. The Photoshop brush pack. Um, it's like it's like $2. <laughs> so, like, I think I paid more. I think I paid 5 Because I always feel bad. Um, but yeah, no, it's, it's very nice. It is built for Photoshop. So, just letting you know. Um, but Photoshop brushes are still compatible with um, Procreate and CSP. Um, you just gotta mess with the settings a little bit. I am doing great. How are you? That was a lie. I'm doing okay. <laughs> Hope you're doing well. Yeah, no problem. She wants to eat your bones. So true. Yeah, no. Initially, she was like a hag in the woods, and we were all like, and she was like gross and terrible. And, like, everybody got mad because she misgendered corn at one point. But it was because, like, she can't see. <laughs> so, like, at a point, corn, Like, if corn is nervous, he'll drop his, like, voice. And, like, he'll... Like, sound essentially sound like me, just a little more high-pitched. Because he's, he's, like, a kid. Um, so all she could hear was his voice. So she thought that he was a, he was a little girl. Um, everyone got angry at her for that. Um, but... No, she... Uh... We, like, she was originally just, like, a hag in the woods and she was gross, but then, like, when we brought her back to the Feywild, she, like, transformed into this beautiful, like, woman. And we are like, oh, alright. <laughs> it's like, okay, you're fine now. You're chill. Yeah, find some brushes to download and procreate then. Yeah, I mean, like, Photoshop brushes are, yeah, compatible with... Um, oh my gosh! Anything specifically Photoshop that can do that Clip struggles with? I've been thinking about getting Photoshop, and it's worth a subscription. If you're used to CSP, Photoshop is not worth the subscription. I am, like, very used to Photoshop, and there's very, very few, like... The only thing that Photoshop does well that Clip doesn't is actual photo editing. Because Photoshop technically is a photo editor. So, like, CSP is not great with photo editing, doesn't have as many filters as, as Photoshop does, doesn't handle color as well, right? And that's just because Photoshop is built to be a photo editor. Um, but in terms of illustration, no. If you're very used to working with CSP, Photoshop has nothing that CSP doesn't. Um... Like, there's very few things, I think, like, for Photoshop, if I was to make, like, a folder, or if I was to highlight all my layers and then click the folder button, all of them automatically go in there. That's a thing that Photoshop does. Um, I can hold down... Whoops. I can hold down sh uh, shift. Excuse me. I can hold down shift and, like, draw perfectly vertical and horizontal lines. And if I want to do a bunch of straight lines from that, I just just have to tap around while holding shift. Another sort of like quality of life thing that's just a little bit different on clip versus CSP. Um, and like the I like the horizontal line thing because like you can just like still apply pen pressure to it. Uh, yeah, it's literally just quality of life things that, like, I prefer in Photoshop over CSP. And, like, CSP is still, like, a very, very good program. So it is, it is essentially just things that, like, I've gotten so used to in Photoshop that I just can't switch out now. Um, I have them both, and it's just, like... Like, I use CSP if there's, like, a function that it has that Photoshop doesn't. Like, the perspective ruler, um, and a more more powerful paint bucket, for sure. Because Photoshop's paint bucket sucks, dude. Um, but... 
yeah. It, overall, though, it is just quality of life, where if you're used to CSP, then Photoshop's not worth it. I don't even use the regular ruler tool. Yeah, there you go. I am glad you're doing great. Photoshop of 3D features. <sighs> I'm pretty sure you can import 3D things into Photoshop and paint directly on top of them, similar to ZBrush, if I remember correctly. I know Photoshop has an animation capability. Um, or were the 3D tools discontinued? I have no clue. I remembered you could import them because like 3D artists would just like import their models and paint directly on top, if I remember correctly. <laughs> Do all paint buckets work the same if you just increase the tolerance or area of fill? Not necessarily. Uh, Photoshop's is actually less advanced than CSP's is. Because CSP's tolerance is called a line close. Um, and line closing is like, if I made my line close really like heavy and I had like outlines like this, like Photoshop has like, they see this and they're like, oops, sorry. Yeah, there's spaces there. CSP, it'll recognize this as two lines supposed to be closed together and will fill this in normally. It's very, very powerful. It's a very strong photo, uh, like, um, paint bucket. Yeah, CSP, CSP is, like, very, very, like, strong in terms of, like, its illustrative capabilities. Um, it is literally just the small quality of life things that I prefer in Photoshop. CSP has better features 3D wise and probably. Yeah. Yeah, Photoshop is basically the one guy who multiclasses everything. Exactly. Photoshop kind of has everything, but that doesn't mean that everything is good. It's like, it, it has it, but that doesn't mean it's amazing. CSP is not free. No, but you can get a trial version. CSP nor Photoshop are free. They, both of them cost money, but CSP is a one time payment, whereas Photoshop is a subscription base. Considering whether or not I should get Photoshop. If you use CSP, don't bother. It's one of those things where it's like, there are, it's like, I won't recommend Photoshop to people who use Procreate or CSP, but I will recommend CSP to people who use Procreate. Clip Studio is just a little bit more advanced than Procreate is. I think that Procreate, personally, when every time I use Procreate, I don't really love how it handles. It feels a little bit floaty. I don't really like how the brushes feel as much. I'm like, I don't really like how the Apple Pencil feels. I don't love the, I don't love the smoothness of Procreate, which is kind of weird to say, but it's just, there's a certain feel to Procreate that I don't love. It's a little too simple for me, <laughs> is my thing. If I open up my, my Clip Studio, you'll see I've like rearranged it to look like Photoshop. Here, you see? Since like all my stuff is on the right side, tools are on here. It's like my windows are very, very similar for both programs. If I close it, it's it's almost the same. Um, I was supposed to be trying to turn subscription based a while ago. I, it was it was based on like you had to pay for updates. Essentially, was what they were trying to do. I think they tested it and people really didn't like it. I, I don't remember if they got rid of it or not. Yeah, I'm a big fan. I'm because I grew up with Photoshop. I'm a huge fan of really intensive big layouts. Like I love like these like really like Photoshop looks so intimidating when you first open it up. It's the same thing with CSP. They are so intimidating looking when you first open them up. They are not beginner friendly programs, but they are powerful. And that's what like I I love big busy UIs because I can read them a little bit better. <laughs> So I'm like, okay, I can identify this. I know where this is. I know what that is. I'm like, okay, cool. I got it. When it's too simple, when they try to like condense everything, I'm just like, I don't know where anything is. <laughs> it does have the subscription for updates, I think. Oh, okay. I know that CSP, if you have it on the tablet, it's subscription. Like if you have it on like an iPad or something, it's subscription based. Um, I've heard that on the iPad, CSP is not amazing. Um, like, I've heard that it is, it's very strong on, like, a computer, but, like, on an iPad, it's very, very, like, dense and a little bit clunky, which makes sense because it's a smaller screen. 
Um, I don't have a tablet, but I do have a Microsoft Surface, which is what I use for like uh, on the go art. And that's what I use my stuff on. So I don't have to deal with like iPad or, or Samsung tablet layouts. Um, and that way I also don't have to pay for the subscription based CSP. Um, because I, a Microsoft Surface has a touch screen, but it isn't an, a tablet. It's a laptop, essentially. It's just a it's just a touchscreen laptop with a removable keyboard. <laughs> there he is. Look at this guy. Does it functionally work the same thing on an iPad though? I'm not sure. I'm really not sure. I don't have an iPad. So I'm glad I started with Medibang. It helped me transition into Clip easier. It's true. I I I will always say like. Free programs are great, but sometimes switching off of them is hard just because like, like especially Krita, I find that Krita's like layouts and tools are so different from the norm that it's kind of hard to swap off. Like I know a lot of Krita users and like all of them like refuse to use anything else. I had like a, I had like a friend who was really into Krita um, and they would not, they like, they tried CSP and hated it. And they're like, I'm not switching. It's like, it's it's like, I don't like how it functions. But it's like, the, the, the reality is that like, all of those are like, kind of normal. <laughs> it's just the, these arms down here. Yes, wonderful. Oh, no. I can only envision this guy is green, so he's gonna be green. <laughs> Oops, missed a couple fingers. Medibang to crit is a big transition. It's a huge transition. It's very different. Project license to update pass. Look at you, the newest updates are going to the next version. Yeah. Try using Krita once ago, absolutely awesome. Yeah, I had no clue what was going on in Krita. I tried it a couple of times. Like I, I worked with Medibang. I worked with um, Photoshop, CSP, Procreate. Um, I think I also tried Fire Alpaca before it as well. And then I went into Krita and I was like, what is going on? <laughs> it's like all these functions are so different. And I'm like, it's fine. Like Krita, Krita, especially as like a beginner's tool is okay. It's just very hard to like transition out of. As an Ibis user, I will say it's not the best. Ibis is a lot. I like Ibis was also a lot to take in. I I remember trying it out for a blog a while back and I was like, this is a lot. It's like usually if my students uh, explain, explain my classes, if they tell me that like they use Krita or if they use Ibis, I'm like, uh, well, I don't think I can help you much. <laughs> um, but like if you're using it, I assume you already know what you're doing kind of thing. Has PNG just been peeled? Something's different. Hi, Oz. Uh, no, we, I just swapped her to have my actual hair. <laughs> Built like a Statue of Liberty. So true. I use sketchbook and Ibis sometimes. I did a sketchbook. I remember when that first came out and it was like the talk of the town or whatever. It was so popular for a while. I've used Autodesk a couple times. I don't hate it. I don't love it. It's like, I think it's okay. Especially if especially if you're only using it as a sketchbook, like you're just bringing it around to do like quick doodles in. Autodesk sketchbook is great. For full pieces, not a huge fan. It's kind of missing a lot of tools and functions that are like very standard and like CSB, Photoshop, Procreate. Um, but like, again, as like a traveling sketchbook, I have it on my phone. Like, it's great if you just want to do, like, a quick doodle. <laughs> and there's a lot of MS Paint artists. I have a friend who's who uses a trackpad and works with MS Paint. <laughs> P 
paint 3D in computer class. Paint 3D is just... I... <sighs> Saying paint 3D instead of Microsoft Paint is really the... The, like, generational difference, I think. <laughs> OG Paint was better. They added layers to MS Paint? You're lying. You're lying. There's nothing here. There's no layers. I'm just talking about Paint 3D. There are no layers here. I don't know what you're talking about. Full screen thumbnail 100%. Nope. No layers here. There's no layers. Oh, I have to update to Windows 11. No, I'm not doing that. <laughs> I don't want to do that. Not for a while, anyway. Not until I'm, like, secure in myself and in this PC. Not until I've backed up everything on this PC, then I will switch to Windows 11. <laughs> on a day when I have a lot of time, I will swap to Windows 11. Oh, your PC came with Windows 11. Okay, so it's newer. Wise, yeah, no, I don't, I don't trust it, man. When I went from Windows Eight to Windows Ten, like when I was younger, I remember I just like, I, I didn't think about it. I was just like, oh, new update, and I clicked it, and everything went haywire, and I was like, oh no, <laughs> I was so like lost. I didn't know what to do. I couldn't handle it. Little me was very sad. I was very confused. Okay, just judging on, like, how much left I have to color and work on, I'll probably do this off-camera. And then, like, I'll post it once it's, like, done done. I don't have a crazy amount, so I'm not gonna be shading this, it's just gonna be flat colors. I'm like, I don't imagine it'll be anything crazy. I used Windows 8? Yeah, because it was a computer at the time. <laughs> I started on, like, Windows XP. <laughs> but, like, Windows 8 when I was in, like, 8th grade. <laughs> Realize how big that spider is. Yeah, man. Look at the person. He's huge. What if Spider's face was just his back, like some some animal scared off his predators? That was the concept, like this was like his back, but then like, I like to think of it as like, if you were to rotate this too, this is also the front of his face. So he has pincers over here that he can function as like a spider's face. But if you were to like, just have him facing you like this, like if he was up on the wall, he would still be able to talk to you this way. The fact that people are bored only knowing Windows 10 scares me. Same! Oh my gosh. Definitely back stuff up. Oh yeah. 100%. Is he green because he's green or green because he's old? He's green because he's green. I like to think that what he's made of is just green. Just an ancient material. <laughs> what are you made of, green? <laughs> I also like to think it's like a clay. A clay that's oxidized. <laughs> or perhaps it was a clay that was just mixed with moss. <laughs> Your elemental power is green. I haven't even watched that movie, dude. I just know that clay. <laughs> I don't even know if it's edited either. I it's like, but I would totally believe if it's not edited. 
Okay, so there's fire, there's <laughs> there's ice, stone, lightning, and my element is green. <laughs> I was so into ninja. It's not. It's not edited. That's perfect. I am. I was. I'm not surprised. Ninjago is a staple of its time, dude. I loved Ninjago growing up. I remember I watched like all of season like one and two, and then a little bit of season three, and then I came back and I don't know what numbered season they were, and I was older, and it was like I showed up and like like Cole was a ghost, and I was like, what? What am I looking at? I was like, what is going on, dude? Best joke in the movie. <laughs> Perfect. Turn my computer back in time. By two years, the computer had to run off my old drive. It's on Windows on it. That's amazing. <laughs> what ancient material are made of? The green, bro. So true. Bro, I loved Ninjago as a kid. So great. Jump up, kick back, whip around and spin. Gotta jump back, do it again. I might have got those lyrics wrong, and I apologize. <laughs> Speaking of lyrics, everybody stream Cheerleader Porter Robinson. Just like, just like, trust me. It's like the best song ever made. I was a PBS Kids person. Me too! Played with Lego in real life. My basement is filled with my father's Lego sets. We have two giant blue bins of loose Lego that we just played with as kids. I have- we have Lego all over this house. My mom gets my dad a Lego set every Christmas. Cause that's his gift. That's great. This is just the man I grew up with. It's why I'm- it's why I'm a nerd. <laughs> I was really into My Little Ponies and LPS as a little girl, and then my dad was like, Jess, I'm gonna show you the greatest movie from my childhood. And he showed me Transformers, the animated movie from the 80s. And it 180 my entire, like, my entire, like, interest base. I was just super into, like, Transformers and got into video games. My parents played Street Fighter sometimes, and I was just, like, really into that, too. Is just that, but that my dad showing me that one movie just 180'd me completely. I could have not been here. I could have been like, you know, I may have been a completely different person growing up if my father did not show me that movie. Literally pivotal. Actually pivotal. Alright, I'm gonna be finishing this off camera. Um, it's really not gonna be, you're not gonna be missing much. It's gonna be a lot of the same, just like manually painting in things. It's gonna be a bit of red and yellow that's popping in here, a bit of brown, just to make the, the green break up a little bit more. Um, but that's about it. Not too much different. Um, thank you all so much for joining me today. Again, thank you so much to XP Pen for sponsoring this video. Thank our sponsor, XP Pen. Um, we have an awesome selection of digital art tablets for both beginner and advanced artists. If you're looking for affordable and reliable digital tablets, go browse their store. You'll find the link in the description of this video. So please go check it out. Check out XP Pen in the comments. Thank you so much to them for sponsoring us again. Several videos and a couple streams they've sponsored. Um, thank you so much to them. Again, don't know too much about us. Don't know too much about the studio. Hi, we're Wing Canvas. I'm not just a one person, not just an individual. We are an art studio. Be sure to check out the classes, wingcanvas.com, that we offer. Summer camps, I believe, are open for registration, or they're opening for registration. Be sure to check those out. Those are going to be coming up soon. And we've also currently got the spring classes going on, which have just started. So, you know, check those out if you, if you want to hop on by. This file that you see in front of you, the JPEG, will be available on our Discord, exclamation point Discord, exclamation point socials. Follow us on a bunch of places, hang out on Discord. But, you know, I don't hang out in the normal channels too often. If you want to hang out with the secret channels, you're going to have to join our Patreon or become a YouTube member. Joining either of those gets you access to special Discord um, hidden channels, you gets you access to working files, gets you access to, to behind-the-scenes footage, class recordings, stuff like that, all that fun jazz. Be sure to check those out as well. This Sunday... Who do you have this Sunday? Is it Josh or is it Iggy? Um... I'm 
This Sunday, you guys have got Iggy. Iggy's gonna be drawing with you guys. Um, is he gonna be talking about how to improve your shading? Looks like. Gonna be talking about improving your art with better shadows again this coming week. This uh, Sunday, tomorrow, that is gonna be the last day for you to submit for the channel. Um, for the uh, theme Endangered, so be sure to submit before tomorrow so that you have a chance to be featured on the stream. Um, and then next week we have no streams. It is the Easter weekend, so our studio is going to be closed. So we actually have no classes, no streams next week. But the week after, I will be returning. Um, and you guys are going to be... We're going to be drawing rain, apparently. <laughs> um, we're going to be drawing realistic rain. Realistic rain, realistic water. So we'll be, we'll be doing that when we come back. But all right. Thank you all so, so much for joining me today. And I'll see y'all in a couple weeks. Au revoir. Bye-bye.